Now share screen. Almost there. Great. Just make that slightly bigger and then we can get going. Can somebody just confirm if they can see my screen? We can. Yep. Amazing. Thank you. Let's wait for it to appear on mine. Well, first of all, while it's going to do that, I know what the first slide is. Welcome to show and tell number three for um, our alpha. Um, we missed the one a couple of weeks ago, slap bang right in the middle of Easter. Um, and uh, timing was poor. So we were also just pretty much kickstarted on a few things. So it was an opportune moment for us to postpone that one. So we've not actually seen you for four weeks, I think, for those that have been coming along to these sessions. So quite a bit to catch up on and, and go over. I'll start doing that now. Um, first thing that's different here, and I'll come to it soon, is the um, slight different change in faces here. Um, like I say, I'll come to it uh, later on with a bit more detail, but um, Geraint Richards and Jonathan Wellington are um, sort of a lot closer on the project as from the alpha perspective, and I'll get into that now. Um, and then from our core collaborators, <clears throat> um, we've been working with James Owen uh, Lucinda and Manon and as part of Discovery as well, but certainly in this first part of our Alpha, we've been um, bothering them a lot to, to get involved and uh, give us some insight from, from their world. So uh, important to have them onto, onto here. Also, a message for myself is to get a pic better picture of Owen. I believe that's him, or it could just be a golfer. Um, right, as ever, um, we're going to try and stick to the timelines that you see here. We're going to cover the things that we've been up to, what we plan to do, uh, things we've learned and what we're going to be doing next. We want to leave enough time for questions. If uh, you do have any questions, please just fire them our way while we're going through this. Um, that, that's fine. But also we will leave enough time at the end to cover this. Any burning questions, my email will be on the last slide, which will be going back out to everyone. Um, OK, so story so far. Uh, to visualise that, I'm just got a, a roadmap to give an idea where things are. So to the left of here, you'll see Mini Alpha 1, Mini Alpha 2. Um, we just named those because that's what, in essence, they were. They both covered a two-week period. We were still looking from the um, hazardous waste work, um, the waste returns work. We were looking at the uh, specifically a return spreadsheet and then building a prototype for the null returns, which was what our last um, show and tell was around, which was the work that went into the prototype and what we tested with users. Um, since then, we're now into what we're classing as main alpha. We're not very good with titles, but this one is focusing around uh, the waste exemptions world and specifically user experience improvements. Again, I'm about to go into more detail on that to, to sort of explain, but hopefully it shows you where we are in the picture and makes sense of what we're about to talk about now. Um, so the focus of main alpha. Um, so we are looking at one area of content on the website, waste exemptions for a subsection of users, farmers, to learn about how we might improve their experience. It, it's worth pointing out now, and obviously we're working with John uh, Willington as well, that regulatory decisions are on our mind here as well in this piece of work because they are uh, very closely linked around waste exemptions. Um, so um, just to keep that in mind that we're not sort of headlong into exemptions, we are looking at a sort of wider picture. Um, so why did we choose this for Alpha? Well, um, it's the start of the journey for many users. Um, it's it certainly from a permitting perspective, it's a, that that can be that be beginning point because for for uh, users, it's um, <clears throat> it's a, a free thing for them to do prior to them needing a permit. More on that later. Um, we know that users have struggled um, in this in this part as well to really understand what uh, whether they're eligible for that, which exemptions they are eligible for, 
Um, much of the learning that we do in this work is very transferable, so it felt exemption is a very strong uh, space for us to be looking at. Um, aligned with that, there's the um, ability for us to expand, expand this further into a, a later phase, however that could be shaped in uh, beta and live. Um, and again, an opportunity to put in some really strong user-centered design and this transferable exemplar for other services, so real good end-to-end -end juicy stuff for us to replicate in other, in other parts that are required in NRW. Um, and we can take a service approach and build around really strong user needs. Importantly, we should be considering what the uh, benefits for NRW from doing this work. So um, this work will potentially um, improve the journey for users. That's obviously really important to get right. Um, but the kick on from that is that um, we already know that the exemption system has got uh, numerous grey areas um, and potential for uh, misuse of the system, uh, illegal misuse. So it's a, an opportunity to make that harder. Um, again, there's a, a, a potential to, for us to have got this right and that there's the potential for increased revenue. Um, users with will comply with regulations more because they understand them better because of how we have structured the information that they need. Um, currently, there is a, a lot of um, a burden on NLW and specifically Custom Hub on, on, on dealing with customers that want more on this space, so we hope to reduce that. Um, again, as we found out in Discovery, um, uh, the, the data aspects, there's rich data happening in, in NLW. So, really better understand um, who is involved in the, the waste system and what they're doing to, to hopefully help future proof this piece of work and then on top of all of this is just the uh, reputational benefits for nrw are uh, are vast in, in in getting this area of work right so we felt these were really strong benefits for us to uh, work work through before we get into um how what we've been doing in the last couple of weeks and how we've been exploring this because we're about to go down the rabbit hole now of, of how we've looked into this how we've worked on the scope i just wanted to pause at this point to see if there were any questions on on anything around where we're focusing on alpha don't worry if that's not the case i can't see any hands up because i'm just looking at my own screen at the moment so Anybody else do let me know if there's questions in the um, messages down the side. I'll take silences, crack on, um, and we'll now cover what have we been doing. So this now we'll be looking at, um, based on what our alpha is about, um, the last two, three weeks has been us really looking at the bonnet. So what we did first. Um, as I mentioned, and as you saw in the picture, we have a new team. Um, so with uh, Geraint and John, um, slightly different from the discovery uh, point of view, where we were working with some core team members, uh, where they were sort of swatted into the team for a sort of fuller length of time. We had them for about 80, 90 percent of their, their time. We have to work differently here, which is fine, because um, that's how flexible we can be in this project. Um, Geraint and John, we have uh, having around one, two hours a week of their time to really try and extract as much information as we can from them. They're still classed as part of our team, but they still have their day jobs to do. But um, that's uh, how we've been working there. We had a project kickoff to help us how we'll work together, certainly in this new way of working, and then better understand the exemptions and regulatory decisions world with working with um, Geraint and John. Uh, we chose farmers as a core user group um, that's mainly because there's a large core element of the users that are using exemptions um, are farmers. We know that there is um, there is an ongoing issue with uh, uh, farmers' use of re-registering exemptions, which happens on a three-yearly cycle. Um, and there has been historically issues around NRW dealing with uh, the exemptions that are selected, which are often uh, incorrect, farmers are choosing more exemptions than they need. And um, so it, it felt that farmers were a perfect user group for us to really explore further. More on that later. Um, we agreed who we should talk to internally within NRW to help improve our knowledge. 
um, and we have actually spoken to them. Again, you'll hear more about that. Um, and we started to set our scope. And it's at this point, I'm gonna hand over to um, Adam, I believe, to talk us through the scope. Thanks, one, Pete. Yeah, so um, in this spring, um, we kind of dig, digging a bit deeper into the scope. So as uh, Pete has mentioned, we homed it down to the exemption space with uh, regulatory decisions there as well, uh, and and choosing users, uh, the farmer group, the group as a as a user group. Um, but we want to dig further into that to understand uh, where the challenges are. Um, so the first sort of two main questions we're thinking about are, are you know, what problems exist in this space uh, and more importantly, where do we start? Um, we're not coming in with the idea that we're going to solve every single problem for farmers or every single problem uh, in terms of the content on NRW or the way that NRW uh, communicates. So we're really homing in on, on the specific areas that we can focus first, learn a lot, test in ideas uh, and kind of grow from there. Um, so that boils down to asking this question really, which is uh, where can we have the most positive impacts, you know, find the gold uh, in the space uh, so we can have a positive impact for NRW and for the external users, so in this case, farmers. So working with the team, uh, we kind of went through this idea of, uh, of the, the layers of this journey, uh, the different levels of questions that, that a user might have and decided to focus uh, on uh, exemptions and their relationship with regulatory decisions. Um, the larger user journey is, is something more like, you know, at the top level, I want to do something, I want to do an activity, I want to do a thing. Um, and then the next layer down from that might be, uh, do I, you know, who do I need to tell? Do I need to tell anyone about this activity? And that's where they're thinking about the local authority planning permission and, and our NRW comes into that question. Uh, once you get further down, you're asking, you know, what part of NRW uh, do I do I check with? Am I, am I looking at waste? Am I looking at water? Am I looking at forestry? Um, and then within the waste management um, part, you, you'll be thinking about the roles you take. Waste management has roles such as producer, carrier, receiver, and then once you've kind of got your way through that as a user, you need to understand, uh, do I need a permit or, you know, a question like what regulatory option does my activity sit under, which is probably not a question any uh, average average person would ask. Um, but I'm sure people from NRW understand what I'm saying there in terms of figuring out the regulatory option that suits the activity. Um, so, yeah, there are all questions that we're kind of naive about and we're quite happy to stay naive about them, ignore them for the moment and focus all of our attention in on how do people understand the exemptions they need, what the exemptions are saying and also the relationship with uh, regulatory decisions. We we have a suspicion that, well, maybe I should say I have a suspicion that this will be bundled up with permits and understanding how permits relate, but that's all things that by focusing on exemptions, we'll, we will probably learn through the user research on the, on the sort of peripheral uh, learnings that we'll get. Um, but yeah, I have done a very quick review of the website, uh, specifically looking at how a user gets to the information around exemptions, uh, looking at the different decisions they, ha they have been asked to make as they go through that journey, um, and also starting to pinpoint um, where regulatory, regulatory decisions might come in on that journey. And the, the top level things is on the next slide here. I can see my own notes. Um, so for someone considering an exemption, there are these sort of key questions that are being asked by the website currently. Um, the reason why I've drawn, drawn them out in this sort of way is that there's no connection between these questions and, and at some point we can start to play around with the order in which we ask them or if we ask them at all um, so that the user can have the most simplified way to, to get into you know here are a list of exemptions that you need to consider um, so yeah taking it from from the from the left there you have this question around a linear network you know are you operating a linear network and something that i don't fully understand myself and we may need to dig into, um, but it's highlighted there as uh, as a separate thing, because if the answer is yes to that, then you need to then can look at the list of exemptions you can register as a linear network, and then you need to call the customer hub. So that's the way that you would 
complete that journey. Um, then you have handling uh, waste electronic equipment that's dealt with separately. If you are, then you you're using a completely different form specific for the T11 exemption. If you're registering over 30 sites, you're calling the customer hub. And then if you're doing a low risk activity, uh, that's where you come into the, this sort of where you could potentially look at regulatory decisions. So you can see it in that uh, diagrams a dotted line because it's not actually on the site at the moment. Um, there's also things called low risk positions that sound very similar to regulatory decisions. So and again, this is my opinion, um, but something we'd be interested to, to hear from users uh, when we if we get to that uh, position. And um, also the fact that maybe they find out that their activity is so low risk that they don't need any regulatory options. So uh, that's an interesting space, just that question by its own. And then finally asking what are you planning to do with the waste? So this is, uh, you know, what type of waste uh, are, are you are you going to use the waste? Are you treating the waste? Are you storing the waste? Are you disposing of the waste? And that's how it's categorised uh, at the moment. All of those exemptions sit on gov.uk under those sort of ca categories. Um, so there's lots of interesting things for us to learn from the users. You know, primarily one of those things could be do users categorise things in that way? Do they categorise things as using, treating, storing and disposing? Um, and these are all things that we're hoping to, to understand a bit more, um, but by asking a bit more uh, pointed and, and specific questions. Um, so we have um, dug into some user needs. Uh, they are predominantly assumption based and we're still stay, staying in this assumption space because we don't trust ourselves. We, we, we need to test our assumptions. We, we need to hear things from users to, to make sure that what we're saying and thinking have has validity. Um, sorry, if you can move on to the next slide, Pete. Um, so we wrote stuff down such as, you know, as a farmer who wants to carry out a waste related activity, I need to know at what scale I can do it without needing a permit so that I can save money and time. So that's an assumed user need there. You know, um, one of the values of doing this exercise is that we start to use language that we can we can dig into. You know, does a farmer understand what a waste related activity is? Uh, do they know the difference between a waste activity and say a water discharge activity? You know, where is that straightforward or is that a blurred line? Do they actually need help to figure that out in itself? Um, and then on to the things that why do they need to know this information? What are they trying to do with it? These are all things that we will learn more about. But by using these assumed needs, we're able to kind of group them and see that they covered about four or five different areas. Uh, sorry, just on the next slide. So we have uh, the user needs around finding the correct regulatory option to cover an activity. Um, behaviors around existing exemptions. So I have an exemption. I need to understand you know, what if I go over the thresholds of that exemption? Do I need a permit? What permit do I need? Um, do I need to renew it when? Those sort of things. Um, you have delegation and support. So from informal support, such as a friend helping out because you have low IT skills, to maybe formal uh, help from uh, consultants. Um, we learned, and well, I learned a new word in this sprint, which is agro agronomist, which is someone who's an expert of science, uh, is an expert in soil management and crop production. And we found out that that is someone that farmers use quite a lot to, to, to sort of get advice from. Um, I should have put the word up actually, because uh, my way I pronounced it is probably uh, terrible. But everyone at NLW is probably like, yeah, we've heard of those before, but I've not heard of an agronomist before. Um, but yeah, a lot of the uh, exemptions I mentioned before on, are on gov.uk. So there's some confusion around the source of truth. Do I trust the ones on gov? Do I trust the one, you know, what, where do I get the information from? And then also maybe some things like once I go on to gov.uk, some users may go to register with the environment agent, not with NRW. So there's some confusion with the overlap between the UK, uh, uh, sorry, not UK, that should be England and Wales. Um, and then generally finding information, that's a bit of a kind of how users find information at the moment as a user needs space that might be a bit too generalized. We might need to dig into specific challenges that users have, you know, maybe, maybe it's the search functionality, maybe something else, but what is it that they're trying to find and why can't they find that? Um, 
So that's looking at it from the user's perspective, but one of the things that we also did in this sprint is to try and flip it and look at it at, from NRW's perspective. Um, and in the conversations with Garay and John and the team, we were able to raise some uh, of the issues that NRW have. And so that's things like, as mentioned, uh, the, the exemptions are held on Gov. So internally that has issues around, for instance, control over that content and as, uh, as things change and they want to adapt and add and remove and, and, and going a different direction to, to England, having that control is important. Um, mentioned by Pete, farmers register renew all exemptions. So there's a, this behavior of, of maybe that's a bit of a generalization, but quite a lot of farmers just renewing all exemptions rather than specifically selecting the ones that they need. Uh, heard some issues around the U1, which is the use of waste uh, exemption number one. Um, so that's been misused a lot, um, legal cases, paperwork. So quite interested in that one. Uh, NRW is unable to track, check, or inspect the activities of users with exemptions. So unlike permitting, you know, the, there isn't uh, an income stream from this, so it makes it harder to fund that work to do that exemption. So, you know, it is a light touch regulatory option, but um, kind of getting that balance between making sure that, you know, the people who have the exemptions are using them correctly it is made difficult by not being able to actually go and check what they're doing. Um, and then the last one there is regulatory decisions are a new form of regulatory option that need to be presented to users. So at the moment they exist within the website, but not in a space that's easily found or, or related to the area that you might be looking uh, as a user. Um, and as I mentioned previously, there's these things called low risk options. So we, we need to understand if regulatory decisions are introduced within that space, how a user will understand the relationship between the different things that they're being presented and you know, which one should they look at first and, and why? Um, so we dug into these uh, problem spaces. Uh, we're using a workshop called Five Whys. Uh, so with me as a taskmaster, um, repeatedly asking the question why five times, um, we dug deeper into, into why these are a problem for NR, uh, NRW. Um, why things like not having a, you know, not having uh, this on NRW site leads to problems like not having a Welsh language version. You know, why is that a problem? And we dug into that. And we, 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 we're in the process of doing this, but essentially what we're learning is that these core values and core issues are popping up over and over again. And, and they are the things that we as a group will, will look into. Um, and hopefully they will show areas that the work that we're doing can have a real benefit for NRW if these problems are solved. And it will ultimately help us choose which problem to focus on. So that leads me on to my, my next slide. Um, so where's the gold? So what, what is it that we are going to focus on to have the, the most positive impact for NRW and external users? We're hoping to create an, a Venn diagram of the user needs and NRW's needs and find um, the most important ones, that, the overlapping ones that we can focus our attention on for the beginning of this um, alpha stage and start creating some solutions and prototypes for. Um, but you will have to wait until uh, next show and tell to find out what those are because we haven't decided yet. But yeah, that is me. I'm passing over to Graham now on the user research. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Um... Yes, uh, user research, obviously, at a, a sort of early stage, we're um, scoping who we need to speak to. Uh, it's very much is connected with um, what Adam uh, has been saying about the right people to speak to, about the right things and the right uh, exemptions. So we've been uh, sort of working out what sort of sample we want um, and where they sit in the sort of web of agricultural businesses, farming, food production, um, and to make sure we get a good spread um, of everything that happens, uh, you know, around the exemptions we're looking at and the guidance uh, and the regulatory uh, uh, sort of statements as well. Um, obviously, at the core uh, of our knowledge at the moment is NRW itself. Uh, and this is just one version of how we might array the things we've got. What we always um, sort of need to do as we go through a project is refine our sample, work out what we've got 
uh, refocus, work out what we need to know uh, and and develop. And so this sort of foundation work will see us sort of sort through each of those twists, hopefully, um, as we as we go along. Um, this is also the foundation layer for getting our external users um, through contact. Um, so lots of people we've spoken to internally, we're hoping to um, get to talk to other people through them, uh, farmers they know, or people who are working in, in sort of agri the agricultural space. Um, but if anyone listening also knows a farmer dying to tell us, tell somebody about what exemptions uh, should be or aren't doing, um, let us know. I think Pete's the person to contact and his um, address is at the end of the presentation. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, we spoke, we've done eight depth user interviews with internal stakeholders um, organized around sort of the uh, NRW project needs sort of um, thoughts about who we should speak to, at least initially. Uh, and obviously this just goes on iterating as we find out what we don't know uh, and work out who to talk to to fill those knowledge, knowledge gaps. These are just some perspectives that have started to arise. Uh, they may not surprise anybody. Um, but we sort of have started to log them. It's a small selection, uh, and it's just to give a flavour at this stage, well before we've finished uh, at this phase of the research, um, of the things that people are saying or the language that they're using. Certainly, silos get mentioned a lot uh, about NRW and the agriculturally related uh, sort of sources of information outside NRW as well. Um, lots of legacy. Uh, Lots of legacy organizations sort of working together or not working together uh, that well um, tends to, you know, provide a clash of priorities, culture, work practices, interpretations. And this is confusing to users, obviously, um, when different sort of approaches are focused on a single user situation. So something like constructed wetlands has got sort of environmental uh, sort of uh, concerns that it involves uh, all the law. And legislation around rivers um, and and many other parts of the organization as well um, one of the big things that it, you know continues to happen as adam sort of alluded to uh nrw is the same but different to the environment agency and other and other functions in uh the dot gov space um uh, to the point of certain things perhaps not being in welsh or some things only being available uh things to do with guidance available on the on you know um EA website, uh, which the NRW website points users to. Um, if it was all the same, that would be a bit confusing, but there are differences as well. Uh, and so there are, you know, it's particularly around lower risk compliance, uh, where, you know, people aren't as worried, perhaps, uh, where there is less risk of things going horribly wrong. Um, there, there tends to be this, um, there tends to be confusion that's sort of been allowed to continue. Um, digital users, we did hypothesize earlier in, in, a, in the previous part stage of the project and at other times that, the, you know, the well-regarded customer hub and the local field officer network um, were got lots of praise from users and th th that kind of quality was seen in as a response to some degree, we thought, to some of the digital failures, uh, perhaps in the guidance path or some of the other places where users tended not to be able to cope uh, with what they came across in the sort of digital side of NRW. Um, but we're all, we've also been reminded in this phase um, of, of, you know, farmers who, you know, the average age of farmers in, in uh, being, you know, over 60, uh, there's a big digital skills <laughs> gap. Um, obviously, having the right equipment to do things um, is, is sometimes not in place. Um, even just connection to a signal in parts of the countryside isn't, uh, uh, necessarily always as you would wish so we do so we do think there's also a, a sort of category uh one of our one of our we we I slightly naively asked if, it, if if farmers might use um their phones to have digital interactions with an rw in the, <laughs> while they were at work and uh the the um the, our interviewee reminded me that um the average dairy industry workers um fingers are bigger than my palms <laughs> and the phone isn't really a, always a useful option uh, for, for everybody on site uh, in, in, in a rural situation. Um, can you go to the next page, sorry. Guidance, uh, everybody mentions guidance and everybody knows it's often detailed, expert, it has a long process to make sure that it um, 
draws out the regulation uh, in the best way and most defendable way possible. Um, but people do notice and have said it, it's rarely user action focused in language and process. We've got a lot to say about guidance, but I'm just going to leave that one there <laughs> for now as a start of the 10. Um, we know uh, we know that everybody thinks anyway, until we speak to our external users on our farmers, that farmers live in a, an almost permanent hail of regulatory requirements and compliance activities in multiple parts of NRW, but also other bodies, local authorities, um, and that um, this conditions uh, A, what they prioritise as most important, B, how they do those tasks, uh, C, where they get their you know help from, um, and so on and so on. So uh, that's the kind of context that we're working in when we're looking at these uh, low risk um, registrations. Um, we spoke to people who work for NRW who also farm uh, or have farmed or are from farming families um, and, and others who didn't and weren't from that uh, area. But consistent across uh, both sides of that was that NRW isn't particularly farmer focused. There are parts of the site that are uh, and there are attempts to make certain things farmer focused. Um, but there seemed to be a general sort of uh, understanding that um, regulation and interpretation and um, making sure everybody saw every sort of piece of uh, kind of opinion and interpretation that exists, um, sometimes won out over um, a notion of what the farmer wanted or needed. Um, we'll see what the farmers say about that, hopefully very shortly. Um, and uh, in terms of sort of Outside influence, we're finding other things that affect people's decisions. Uh, lots of people very frankly said, well, it's the supermarket and accreditation schemes that drive um, the exemptions that people have and when they do them just before the audit, last minute. And, and perhaps that's why they don't choose carefully among them. Uh, that's one of the sort of driving factors. So we're, we're learning sort of single uh, bits of influence. And also people who work with those influences within NRW um, to achieve the aims of their aspects of policy or, or regulation. Um, uh, the next stage is is to talk to some more internal users uh, as we as we sort of find out uh, more about the network of people who know what and to um, start to talk to external users that they recommend, as I say, and also um, we've been through a process to engage um, the um, a recruitment consultant, a, a, a recruitment agency rather, who can get us some of the more niche or hard to reach uh, Welsh and English language farmers um, who will be able to tell us um, all about what their real actual in the field and in the field experiences are. Now I'm going to hand you over to Sam who has some uh, non-user research data to uh, <laughs> to give us some content. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody. So we've started um, looking under the bonnet of, of user data and our early focus has been customer hub data and knowledge and website analytics. Um, so some early nuggets here. We've got um, over 40,000 waste exemptions registered at just under 10,000 sites. Um, they're figures from the 2020 annual regulation report. They might be a bit different now, but those are the sort of kind of numbers that we're looking at there. Um, we've learned that around 70% of exemptions are registered online through the registration portal and the rest are paper applications. So I think we're quite quite surprised that such a, a big proportion of applications are, are dealt with in, in this way. And, um, you know, 30% of, of that number is, is pretty big stuff. And you'd have to think, is there a, a cost to NLW of, of processing applications received in that way? Um, but it also kind of makes us think, well, well why is there such a, a, a drive for, for people to, to what? Why do people want to register in, the, in that way rather than online? Um, there's a small group of exemptions we've learned that drive most queries to Customer Hub. And these are described as U1, D7 and D1. Uh, U1, Adam has talked about that briefly. Um, that's using waste. Uh, and the two Ds are about disposing waste. Um, so we've heard that U1 can often be misused. So that's quite quite a kind of interesting area for us to, to keep an eye on and explore um, more around. So of users who we have a page on the website, register or renew your waste exemptions. 
and abusers who choose who go to that page and then choose to do something which is to follow a link from that page elsewhere 60 percent of users um to choose to do something go to the portal um and is that because they already know what exemptions they need to register so they just want to do them are they not reading about the registrations and learning about them before they go to the portal so something for us to kind of be mindful of of there um, on that page the link to there, there is a link to the actual waste exemption criteria and you know as we've discussed that content is on gov.uk um, we describe it as as the regulations i think describe it using storing disposing and treating of waste um, most users, 40% of users that go to that page, go out to those to that content on gov.uk. Um, but do they do they know what they're looking for? Is that the language that users use? Um, if a farmer wants to build a hard standing, do they know that they need a U1? Do they know that's using waste? Um, so these are all really interesting uh, uh, questions. We're in touch because we've lost users at that point. They've left the MLW site. They've gone to GDS, gone to gov.uk. We've been in touch with um, GDS to see if they have any data they could share with us, um, any insights into what happens when users go to that page. Are they staying there? Are they perhaps even registering with the wrong um, regulatory body because they've moved to a different site? So that's an interesting information as well. well we'll keep going with this approach of looking at this kind of problem space from different points and seeing what this kind of evidence is telling us and to help build that picture of how users find out what they need to do and how they then go on to do it or not um, and if there are any other data sources out there that could be useful to us then then do let us know thank you we'll be to pete thanks <clears throat> and aware of time so I'll just spruce through what we're going to be looking at, at next. Um, so as you heard, more internal user interviews will be happening. Um, and then following on from those, uh, the internal user leads will be moving our attention to other significant organisations, uh, unions and external users. Um, then we um, piece of work that we were going to put in in this one, but clearly I'm glad we didn't because we'd have gone way over, but um, really important work around the um, the Welsh language hypotheses that we have. And um, certainly this piece of work has been kicked off, so we'll have more of that uh, next time we see you. And then continuing what Adam was touching on was that further search for gold, the continuing the alpha scoping. Um, which brings us to our last slide. Um, Thomas is away our uh, product manager but his dog is here Mia and um, so he is here in some shape or form um, yes any questions at all happy to um, take them now or afterwards also we've um, as our messages here please do feel free to challenge anything that we've got here we we can take it on the chin but you know we're still obviously learning in this space so we're going to learn more from any challenge that, that come our way I'm going to go on to the last slide and then bring my sharing screen down so I can see if there are any other questions coming down. You'll see my email address is on here. Um, also to add to the plea that came from Graham that if anybody does have any good strong contacts with um, uh, the far farming community we, and would be interested to, to get involved and for us to speak to them and we'd love to hear from them. Um, I've got a blank screen but hopefully you can still hear me. But are there any questions? And are there any questions that will come in from the side panel that any of my team can help me on? I think someone's got their hand up. Oh. Yeah. I think it's just... Yeah, I'm to go. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Good. got it. Yeah, hello, guys. Uh, well done, Peter and the rest of the team. It's really nice to share this um, and get insight into all the good work you guys are doing out there. Um, just one quick question. I've been sort of putting together some um, work with regards to recruitment and um, user engagement. And I was wondering um, if your work with um, Geraint and John have anything to do with that? What exactly 
are their roles and um could you enlighten exactly what they do within the team you said they sort of have their day jobs but somehow they're collaboratively working with you on uh, on this does my question make sense <laughs> yes. it does who's best place to answer that one could be any of us um so uh, uh Geraint is um i'd have to lean on sam for proper job title of Geraint. i'm not sure if he's on the call um but he, his world is around exemptions and looking at the, that that piece so your question around was it more around how they are involved in our project yeah from that from that aspect um yeah i mean from from um Garen's point of view his ongoing um issues are you know the, the things that we've highlighted there where farmers have um have this have been re-registering the misuse of exemptions either you know accidentally or not so these are pieces of work that, that have been looked into already and are a focus of attention for nrw um which made it perfectly time for us when we were exploring a, a space for us to play in in an alpha okay. um, was to align with with brain so he's already looking in the into those areas working with specific guidance teams you know there's there's jobs um on a to-do list that um hopefully now we're involved to sort of help and the same with john and um, from a regulatory decisions um, point of view and both of them are you know in, in that sort of same space they're looking at similar problems and um, we've been fortunate to um, share with the nrw stakeholders senior stakeholders about what we'd like to do and they very kindly pointed us in the direction of both grant and john to say well we can't give you all of their time but we can certainly give you some of their time and so we are um aligned some way towards problems they're already dealing with mm. Okay, fantastic. I think it's a it's a fantastic way to work, get that collaborative feedback from. Um, I sort of at, at the first instance thought they were like farmers that were willing to collaborate in the design process at the very early stages. But um, um, what you've got is, I mean, just as good. You need that sort of input from that perspective as well. Anyway, um, thank you. No, no, definitely. Uh, good to hear from you as well, Femi. I think we're meeting tomorrow, aren't we, to hear more from the DEFRA side as well. So thank you for your, your question. Um, yes, any more for any more? I know we've just drifted over the allotted time. There's a question from Helen in the chat. Hi, Helen. Hello. You might not know the answer now, just curious. <laughs> Are there, do we know that any yet? <laughs> So do we know yet 70% of people registering their exemptions online are doing it themselves or could there be people, companies, unions that are doing it on behalf of other people? I think the answer is we're just dipping our toe into it, but I can see Graham's head nodding with more than that. Um, yes, sometimes it's involuntary, but in this case, um, yeah, we've had lots of anecdotes about, um, you know, physical meetings being good for some farmers when people get together. Um, and they can sort of talk through and, and, and people in unions and other, other organisations help them. And we know, but we don't have a very good feel for quite how it happens, um, that consultants play a, a, perhaps an increasing role in this as well. Um, we're certainly doing our best to target them in the, uh, in the recruitment process. And we think we've got some good leads as well. So hopefully we'll have a, a better answer to that question if you ask it next time. OK, thank you. Thanks, Helen. Uh, Marvin, saw the hand go up. Hello, hello, hello. Apologies for guys. I haven't spoken to you guys for ages, and um, I was just sort of joined late, unfortunately. But um, okay. yes, um, quick one. Um, I know uh, that uh, a request has been made recently to give access to the test system. But I just want to say that I'm free to work through with yourselves um, the portal side of stuff, so access to the portal. So I'm willing to work with yourselves on that because um, I don't think it's, it will be possible to kind of give you access to the to the test portal, but I'm happy to do that. I have access to both the portal and the back end system to sort of show you the end to end process at the moment in, in, a, in, a, in a test tested uh, way, in a safe way. 
That's uh, great, Marvin. Thank you. Say that. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say, just in response to what um, Helleth was saying, we've seen in a data cleanse project um, <laughs> the the use of emails, farmers union uh, emails for multiple registrations. Uh, so we we do have some uh, information there also, which is showing us that um, farmers unions are sort of doing things on behalf of farmers uh, when those farmers sort of have uh, links to those associative bodies. Uh, so, it, but again, it's just very, so I guess through all the different sources, we, we may get to a position where we have a better picture overall, but we can assist with some of that as well. That's brilliant. Thanks as ever, Marvin, for your help. That's all right. Yes. No worries. We will speak again, no doubt, mm -hmm. very soon. Indeed. Indeed. Um, any more for any more, let you escape. Um, thank you so much for your time today everyone if you do have any questions or any uh, burning stuff that's just going to come about after we've disappeared um my email will be on the deck that, that goes out and uh yeah if there isn't anything else uh you'll hear from us two weeks from now with the latest on all the other bits that we never got a chance to cover but thanks everyone for your time and speak soon have a good rest of the day all the best bye thanks thank you